The base's chief intelligence officer, Major Jesse Marcel, was dispatched to the ranch to investigate. We had to follow the rancher out there. With just verbal directions, we know would have found it. Marcel and another officer were the first military to arrive at the crash site. They came upon an expanse of unrecognizable debris strewn across an area the size of a dozen football fields. There was so much of it. It was scattered over such a vast area. We found a piece of metal uh, about a, far, a foot and a half to two feet wide and about, about two or three feet long. It felt like you had nothing in your hands. It wasn't any thicker than the foil out of a pack of cigarettes. The thing about that got me is that you couldn't even bend it, you couldn't bend dead it. Even with a sledgehammer would bounce off it. Marcel was ordered to immediately transport the strange wreckage to Fort Worth Army Airfield. There, Marcel was met by the commanding general who told him to keep silent in the face of what was becoming a media frenzy. They had a whole flock of microphones there. They wanted me to they wanted some comments from me, but I wasn't at liberty to do that. Marcel was instead ordered to pose with wood, foil, and rubber debris from a conventional weather balloon. All I could do is keep my mouth shut. And General Ramey is the one who told the newspapers what it was and to forget about it. It was nothing more than a weather observation balloon. Of course, which we, we both knew differently. Colonel Thomas DuBose, who was also ordered to pose with the fake debris, describes how an iron curtain of secrecy slammed down. This is the highest priority you can exhibit, and you will say nothing. More than top secret, as he said. Beyond that, this is the story we're going to tell the public. It was a cover story, the balloon part of it, in order we don't have any more inquiries about what we picked up on the desert. 